What's going on YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists? Welcome to the next part of my Alien RPG where I'm breaking down the core rulebook, just looking at each section. Now we're on, this video covers section five, which covers combat and panic. And it starts out with a great quote by a character called Dylan. You remember him from Alien 3? He was the, um, the inmate with the glasses um, that kind of got on well with Ripley. He was a sort of leader of of the the inmates there, if you, if you recall. He says, you're all going to die. Only question is how you check out. Do you want it on your feet or on your, insert F word, knees, begging? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, you know what a bit I'm talking about. So combat and panic then. Now this is a very large section um, of the rules, but don't worry, that said, it's not actually that difficult. Um, you have, let me see, on, on your character sheet, you have close combat for the physical stuff and you have ranged combat for the far away stuff. And you can use, you can inter, you can use things like strength, and mobility and agility you can use all those things whatever works best for you really and it breaks it down first of all it tells you about the zones and the the kind of proximity of your characters with with whatever they're fighting so um uh, borders and lines of sight to cover that it covers measuring time it tells you how to do that it's quite it's quite simple because it, in, uh, it goes through the rounds, turns, and shifts. And this is approximate, of course, so bear that in mind. But uh, a round is around about five to 10 seconds. A turn is about five to 10 minutes. And a shift is five to 10 hours. Uh, that's game time, of course. So, right, you got different categories. There we go, yes. The distance between you and your opponent is divided into five range categories. You've got engaged, which is where you're actually engaged. Short range, which is a few meters away. Medium is up to 25 meters away. Long, which is about 100 meters away. Or extreme, which is about a kilometer away. And it tells you about zone features, darkness, all that kind of stuff. Stealth mode. Now, this is important. In the alien role-playing game, much of the frill happens before the enemy shows itself and bullets start flying. Now this is true because this is this is a sci-fi survival horror basically. So the excitement is all before uh, you are engaged in combat, if, if, if indeed it ends that way. Uh, key part of the experience is exploring unknown locations with enemies lurking in the darkness. In the game, this is re represented by what we call stealth mode. Stealth mode is played out in turns. In turn one, you can move two zones on the map and explore them, scanning for enemies, getting a superficial description of these two zones from the GM. If you're a team, you can explore the map individually or as a group. Now, I'll say this. I've, I've read the book cover to cover and sections a few times, and I've played for a few uh, solo scenarios now. As a group, you don't really want to split up if you can help it. I know that, and that may not always be, be kind of a choice for you, but uh, if you can help it. If you want to examine something in the zone more closely, such as uh, accessing a data terminal, you need to stay one entire turn or even longer in a single zone. The GM has the final say. In stealth mode, enemy movement is handled secretly by the GM. This is carried out each turn after your PCs have moved. NPCs must comply with the same rules of movement as PCs. Human NPCs can only move two zones per turn. Non-human characters may move faster or have other special abilities. For example, androids and, um, you know, things of that nature, robots, they can move faster than a human. So, and of course, aliens. To handle NPC movement, we recommend that the GM has a second copy of the, com of the conflict map hidden from view by the GM screen. Available for purchase separately. Yes, well, uh, that, this is just them promoting their other goods, which is fair enough. 
On this map, the GM can place tokens to represent NPCs hidden from the player's view. If your GM doesn't have access to a screen, she can simply track hidden NPC movement on a piece of paper, which is what you know most people do, I think. Enemies can be active or passive, as dictated by the scenario or the GM active. Enemies are aware of you and are actively stalking you. Passive enemies are not aware of your presence and can be ambushed by you. Then it goes on about detection, uh, motion trackers, which is an important uh, part of gear in your in your um, uh, equipment, especially for stealth mode, you know. <laughs> uh, and it says here, a useful piece of gear in stealth mode is a motion tracker such as the M314 unit. Tells you what page to go to to, to look it up. Um, and it tells you about that. And it goes on to actions and initiative. Initiative ha is handled in this game with cards uh, ranging from one to ten. You, it's true you could all um, roll dice, uh, but this just eliminates um, two people or more getting the same roll. Um, it's up to you though. Dice work perfectly fine. Uh, and obviously, well, in the in the game cards the one goes first up to ten which would go last so, yeah. you can change the initiative and there are um, now this can be done by a couple of different ways I won't go into that now it's, it's not that difficult but uh, slow and fast actions right this is quite important when it's your turn to act in a round you can perform one slow action and one fast action or two fast actions a slow action usually consists of rolling for a skill a fast action is quicker and doesn't always require rolling dice, though it might. See lists of typical slow and fast actions and tells you on the page. And that's, so it's kind of good for that. So you've got some typical uh, fast actions. Uh, run, move through a door or hatch, get up, draw a weapon, block, shove, retreat, seek cover, you know, drive. Slow actions, you've got uh, crawl, close, combat attack. Uh, shoot firearm, burst of war, full auto fire, reload, first aid, give orders. Anyway, the list goes on. You can help others. There's movement, running, crawling, close combat, doors and hatches and vehicles, ambushes and sneak attacks. Then there's a subsection called close combat. And it goes into how that is like the resolved, blocking, grappling, retreat, shoving. And it gives examples, which is rather nice. And um, yeah, so then it goes into ranged combat with a similar sort of deal. Full auto fire, cover, ammo, overwatch. Uh, anybody that's into uh, Warhammer knows all about overwatch, I'm sure. Then it tells you about the damage, armor, recovery, broken, getting back up, uh, coup de grace, critical injuries, death, and there is a critical injuries table to roll on, which is always, well, my advice when you're playing this game, get bookmark the pages that you will reference quite a lot. And um, critical injury is one you may want, uh, and it's right next to the permanent mental trauma. Talks about healing, health points, and so on. And then it goes on to an, um, another aspect, which is quite interesting um, and, a, and a major forms a major part of the Alien um, game, which is stress and panic. Now, I love this aspect of the game. The mountain tension in your character is measured by their stress level. It usually starts at zero and increases during the course of the game. Your stress level increases by one whenever one of the following happens. You push a skill roll. Now that simply means whatever you've got to roll for your skill and you don't get a success, you can re-roll them again. You gain, a, if you want to push the roll, it means you can roll all the unsuccessful attempts again and you gain an extra dice, but you gain extra stress. Now if you get a one on the stress dice, you have to roll on the panic table and that, that can be, you know, not good for you, basically. Um, panic rolls. And this result, the, the panic roll table can go from keeping it together, just, to catatonic. You collapse on the floor, can't talk or move, staring blankly into oblivion. Those, you know, that's... And, um, yeah, <laughs> talks about that. You can, you can reduce your stress, relieving stress. 
goes on about other hazards, uh, the conditions, starving, dehydrated and exhausted and the vacuum of space as well because, you know, explosions happen, combat can happen in space, freezing, falling explosions, fire, disease, radiation, drowning, suffocation, synthetics. Now, synthetics, the androids, they are a big part of this game as well. So, synthetic individuals are increasingly common in the core systems and appear on the frontier as well. Some are open about their artificial nature, others pose as humans. In combat, androids act like humans they, and they roll skill rolls normally, but there are several differences in which it goes into. They don't get stressed, basically, but they can act stressed if they want to maintain, keep up the appearance of being human. Then it goes into Xenomorphs, multiple action signature attacks, the health, armor, and special abilities. Then it talks about vehicle combat, because there's a wide range of vehicles. Um, the damage to it, aerial vehicles, repairs, and um, that covers that section on combat and panic. So, like I say, it's quite a big section. Sounds like I, I mean, I'm... I'm not rushing for it, but um, there's no real need to go because it's really, really easy. Once you get the gist of it, when you start reading the book, it's really quite simple. Some good artwork in this book as well, lovely. And um, I will, um, well, thanks very much for watching and I will get back to you. And that covers that section on combat and panic. So thanks ever so much for watching. Remember all brushes lead to what I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.